Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to create this donut using Cinema 4D. So let's get started. This will be a two part tutorial where we will be modeling the donut in the first video and we'll also be simulating a bunch of donuts falling using rigid body systems in the next video. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Uh, to start making the donut, I'm gonna start with a torus shape. So create a torus from the object menu. And in the options here, you can play around with the radius to make it look like a donut. So I'm gonna bring down the ring radius a bit. Now to take a look at the segments that we have in here, we just go to display and click on go to shading lines and we will know that the number of polygons this is having, right? So uh, since we are actually planning to simulate, um, you know, uh, an animation later, it's not a good idea to have too many polygons in here. So this is pretty decent and it's giving the right definition. So let's keep it at 36. That's the shape right now. What we have to do is we have the rough base of the donut and we need to create a cream layer on top of it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to define the polygons that should have the cream layer. So I'm going to go to the object edit mode on the left toolbar and let's go to polygons. Let's select the live selection tool and select a couple of polygons by dragging on top of it. I'm going to make a selection like that. So this is where I want my cream to appear, right? So I've made the selection right now and I'm going to save that selection by going to select and click on set selection. You can see a triangle icon appearing next to the torus. This, using this, you can recall the selection anytime that you want. So if you click on this, you can recall the selection. So this is something that we might need it later. So uh, with that said, we are going to go back to making a uh, the cream layer. So to build the cream layer, I'm going to use a feature called Metaballs, right? So we will be basically creating uh, a couple of spheres and then melting them together to create one organic shape which looks like cream on top of the donut. So what we're going to do is we'll create, we'll start with a sphere. So let's go to the object uh, icon and click a sphere. Let's bring down the scale really small and scale it up and so that we can see this clearly. So we have the sphere right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cloner tool. We need multiple copies of the sphere. So I'm going to go to the MoGraph tool, click on cloner and add the sphere into this cloner. So we can see the cloner is already duplicating the spheres right here. So we're going to go to the cloner options. I'm going to change the linear mode into object and I will take the torus and drag it to the object section right here so that the cloning is happening on the surface of our donut shape. But we don't want the cream to appear everywhere. We just want it on the selection that we initially recorded. So to get that, you can see a uh, empty slot called selection right in the object window of the cloner. So all we have to do is drag the triangle from the torus, which is the selection, and then drag it to the selection tool slot. And you can see now the cloning is appearing only on the polygons that we selected. So we can increase the count and we can see the um, cloning is happening only on the areas that we have defined. So you can increase the count by entering the numbers here. So I think this is pretty decent. We have um, enough number of spheres to create the meta uh, ball. So once after doing this, to create the meta ball, what we're gonna do is we will go to the uh, modifier uh, icon, we'll choose meta ball and then drag the cloner into the meta ball. So you can see that now what uh, Cinema 4D does is that it actually takes all the spheres and joins them into to forming one uh, shape, one mesh. So you can go to the meta ball and you can see some options here. There is the hull value, so you can reduce them or you can bring it down to make it look more like cream. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere in 80 percentage. It looks pretty decent to me, right? This looks pretty good. So we have that right now. Now, before moving further, I just need to add some definition to the torus, right? So what we're gonna do is we'll go to the torus. So let's hide 
uh, our metabol right now. We we can have the totus. So right now it's looking very flat. It's very empty right now. So I'm going to add some displacer here. So to add some sort of definition on the surface of the torus. So to do that, I'm going to go into the uh, subset. I will select displacer from here, and I will bring displacer into the torus. So in displacer for shading, I'm going to choose a noise modifier. So I want to create a displacement using noise. So we can see some definition happening in here. So this is looking pretty good. And I can turn on my metabolites right now. So everything is good, right? Now we need to create some particles on top of it, like some, some sprinkles on top of it. So I'm going to use the same technique that we've used earlier using the cloner. So let's create a shape. So I'm going to create a uh, sphere first, scale it down, bring it up so that you can see it, drag it and make it a little smaller. So we have that. I'm going to create a cloner again. So motion uh, more graph, click cloner, add the sphere into the cloner. Now in the cloner, change the linear mode into object. And for the object, I can drag and drop in the meta ball. So you can see the cloner, the spheres are appearing on the meta ball, on the cream. So on the top of the cream, it's actually happening like that. You can make the count, right? You can increase the count a little more. Uh, another thing that I'm going to do is I will add one more shape uh, as a sprinkler. So I will go here, I will take the capsule, I'll take this here, maybe scale this down a bit. Let's increase the height a bit. And yeah, I think this looks pretty good. So I want to do this shape sprinkled on top of the donut as well. All we have to do is take the capsule and drag it inside the cloner so it also gets cloned like this. So we have a variety of both shapes right now on top of our donut. So you can see we have the shape, the basic shape sort of set, right? Now what we are going to do is, uh, before we proceed further, we will create a copy of it. This is going to be our low res copy and we're going to create a high res copy as well because later in the second part of this video, we will be simulating an animation using the low res version as a proxy and we will replace it with the high resolution version towards the end before rendering it out. It makes the workflow really fast. The processing power that you require will be really small and your work file is going to be much stable. So uh, let's take our model. We will take all of this, select shift select all of it and alt G to create a group and we'll call it donut low res. Now let's copy that. And paste it here let's change that to donut high res so we have a donut high resolution and let's move it so that we can see both of it separately okay so we have the high res version as well so in this high res uh, version we're going to add a subdivision modifier so i'm going to go into the subdivision modifier option click on that and you can immediately see the model is getting a lot more definition and it's looking more uh, high quality uh, like a real donut and this is what we actually want right we have both of this right now this is our high res uh, donut i'll just rename the title also here donut okay and we have our low resolution version right so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, some materials. So I'm going to go to click a new material. Let's call it the bread. So this will be our material for the bread that we're going to use. So I'm going to go in to this and I have downloaded a texture to apply for it. And donut uh, bread is not a reflective material. So I'm going to turn off the reflectance. Let's go to color and click on the texture, load an image. And let's go to choose uh, this particular image right here so okay no and we have that in our shape right now okay and uh, what we can do is we can just drag and drop it right there you can see the material is being applied there as well so uh, another thing that I want to do is I can uh, to make the material mapping a little better I can do add some normal and displacement so to do that I'm going to use a website called normal maps online where you can generate normal maps for any 
uh, textures that you're working with. So normal map will add uh, a lot more definition uh, and it's much better than the regular bump maps because it can react to light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this load, choose our donut texture and it automatically creates a normal map and also uh, a preview here. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll download the normal map. So I'll download the normal map here. I'll also download the displacement map. So click download and we have the displacement map. And it's looking good. So now we can come back here. We'll go back to the material in the normal section. Tick on this and I will add our normal map like this. So we can see the definition just coming right there. And I can go to the displacement map. I will add the displacement map here. And I will turn on sub polygon displacement to get a little more definition in here. And that's it. So we have a uh, lot more definition with materials in here. That's good. Let's go and create a material for the chocolate. So I'm going to go click a new material and call it chocolate. And in here, I also have a material for it. Let's go to color. Let's load up the chocolate texture like here. I have it. I'm going to bring that here. Click no. And I can add it by dragging this to the material right here. So this is coming like that. It's looking pretty decent. Now in reflectance, I'm going to remove the default specular. So I'm going to click remove. It becomes a flat object, but I'm going to add a Beckman reflection right here. So Beckman by default uses a metallic reflection. So it looks like metal, highly reflective. We don't want that. So I'm going to go to the type, which is Beckman. We just chose uh, Beckman. Let's keep it Beckman. And we will go to attenuation. We'll change this to additive. So we can start to see the chocolate texture through it. We can bring down the reflection strength. So you can now see the chocolate is much, much less, uh, you know, much uh, lesser in its reflective property. We can also increase the roughness of the reflection. So it, it looks more like uh, real chocolate. So it looks pretty good. So without reflection and with added reflection, it looks much better. You can also add a bump if you want. So I'm going to just come into the bump texture and I will load the same image for the bump as well. So you can see some sort of bumping happening here. Now it looks really, really good, right? So we have that. We will have some materials here as well. So I'm going to create a new material for the sprinkler. So let's come here. We will not use a texture. We'll just change the color of it. So we have a sort of green texture right here. And we will duplicate that. So option click to create a second material. Let's come to that material and change the color. Right, we have this. Now to apply that to the sprinkler, you can open the donut high-res texture. And in the cloner, for the capsule, I want this. So you can drag it directly there. And for the sphere, I want the green color there. So I just applied it there. Yeah. So I have applied uh, the texture on both the higher resolution and the low resolution one. You can see it side by side. And it looks really, really good. So a model is set right now. We are going to use this setup, the low resolution version. We're going to use it for our simulation. And we were going to replace that with this final uh, high definition work later at later stage. So let's set up our light. So I'm going to create a floor quickly. So we have a floor. Let's bring that up a bit. And um, let's go in and click to create a sky. We will load in an HDRI map. So I have an HDRI map downloaded. So I'm going to add it to Cinema 4D. Click No and drag that into the sky. So now the sky is using our HDRI map to illuminate the scene, which is pretty good. So we need to set up the rendering. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's hide our lowest version. And let's go and change our render settings. Let's change our renderer to physical. We will add a global illumination and also an ambient occlusion. We'll also change the ground color. So let's go to create a new material and I'll just put white in here so that we can see it clearly. Let's quickly take a test render. So we'll click on this button. And uh, that looks really good. This is the end of part one of this video. 
In the next video, we're going to talk about how to animate this donut with a free fall animation. Take care and I'll see you soon.